I'd like to, to share this afternoon a few principles with you uh, on discerning the will of God for your life. Uh, one of the things I've been amazed at as being pastor at Berean through all these years is the, the great need that people have to, to understand the basic biblical principles on how to determine God's will for their walk, for their future, and for their life. Uh, one of the things I'm convinced about is that there are few people today that really, really understand or have thought through uh, how to find God's will or discern the will of God for their life. I've been fortunate uh, when I got married to my wife, her father was a, a very, very godly man, man and a wonderful man of God. Uh, he sat down with me by the hours over the years and, and the different churches that I uh, was called to, different decisions I made, uh, different places where we moved, uh, homes that we bought, uh, different things that were major decisions in our lives. Uh, he would walk me through a number of principles that were very helpful for me uh, to create a framework of being able to make wise and godly decisions. One of the things I've been surprised at over the years is how few people uh, in the church ever come to me, or uh, and that for that matter, or anyone I suppose, uh, to seek counsel, godly advice on how to find God's will for their life. What I want to do in these few moments we have together here this afternoon in my, in my study is just to share some principles with you that I think will be helpful to you. And uh, after I do that, I, I put on my blog, I'll list a number of books over the years that I've collected and read that have been very, very helpful and instructive on discerning and finding the will of God. One thing I want to remind you, uh, my dear Berean family, is that uh, God is concerned that we make wise decisions. And He promises us that if we seek Him and trust Him and follow Him, He's going to guide us in the great decisions of life. Um, for example, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, here's the Lord speaking through His servant, and He says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. So if we trust in the Lord with all of our heart, if we're committed to Him and seeking Him, if we lean not on our own understanding, on our own feelings or our own desires and wishes, but if we lean on the Lord and not on our understanding, it says, and in all our ways we acknowledge Him, that is, we look to Him, ask Him for guidance and advice, ask Him to, to give us peace and to give us direction, He says He will direct our paths. Now, be assured of this, if you're a committed Christian, and you're walking with God, He's far more concerned about you being in the right place, uh, with the right mate, with the right job, the right, the right uh, circumstances. He's far more concerned about His will for your life than you, you are even yourself. Uh, that's a great principle to follow. In the book of Psalms, chapter 37, uh, we read this particular verse in Psalm 37, 4. Uh, this is a Psalm of David. He says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. One of the joys of, of being a Christian and walking with God is to know that if you are serving God and pleasing Him, and it's the passion of your heart uh, to, to be in His will and to, and to honor Him, He will give you the desires of your heart. And what that means is it doesn't mean we have a blank check that whatever we want we get, but it means that the godly man or woman, their desires will measure up to God's desires, and He delights to give us the desires of our heart. So it's important that we follow biblical principles to discern the will of God for our lives. Again, I'm, I'm greatly uh, amazed at how often that people don't come to seek advice from their pastor and, and ask for wisdom on, on certain matters. Uh, I want to just give you these principles that my father shared with me, my father-in-law shared with me many years ago. Uh, when I think back, he's now with the Lord in heaven. And when I think back to those wonderful times sitting at his feet, I mean sometimes by the hours, and I can picture him now in my mind and as I had major decisions to make and he would be so instructing and so exhorting and, and so forth and, and these were principles that he just kind of uh, just shared continuously with me at the various stages of my life when great decisions had to be made. Uh, the first principle that he often shared with me is that that whatever decision we make, if it's choosing a mate, choosing a career, uh, choosing a home, uh, various other things, whatever major decision you make, it must always be in accordance to the revealed will of God. God's personal will for my life or your life will never contradict the Bible. 
And now some of the things I've read over the years uh, basically teach it like this, that within the framework of the will of God, we have great liberty and freedom. For, for example, the laws of God and the principles of the Bible form a circle. And anything within the side that circle, that, that is within the circle of, and the framework of the law and will of God, is fair game for us. Some people have this idea that I have to be in the very center of God's will, and it's not always quite like that. Give me an example. Suppose a, a young woman is in a college, and she's at a Bible college, and she's looking for a mate for her, for her future, for her life. There may be any number of young men uh, that she could choose uh, and select to be her husband. Obviously, you know, a, a man and a woman, they, they, they come together, and they'll both know and seek each other out. But the point is made is that in a, in a situation, it, you don't marry outside the faith. A young lady or a young man, they don't choose a mate who's not a non-Christian. If you're a Christian, you marry within the will of God, which means you, you marry a believer. Now, once you follow that principle, you might have any number of people that you might have freedom to choose from. And then that takes time to, to know and discern God's will for which of those individuals that are Christians that you may choose for your, your mate or your, your, your partner. So the first principle is to make sure that you, whatever decision you make, you're choosing it within the framework of the will of God. You, you don't do anything that's contrary to Scripture. Uh, the second principle, my, principle that my father-in-law shared with me was the fact that there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. And over the years, any decision that Mary and I had to make, uh, there were godly people that I would seek advice from. Uh, my pastor, Bob Shelton, I, any, any of the major decisions I had to make early on in my life, uh, I went to him. I went into his office, would sat down, and when it came time and I was getting ready to uh, get married to Mary, I wanted to make sure I was thinking properly, and I sat down with my pastor. Um, the very first church that I was called to in Flint, Michigan, I accepted a call to be in a, uh, a youth pastor at North Baptist Church in Flint. I sat down with Pastor Shelton. Uh, of course, there's uh, your parents or your mom and dad, if they're alive, uh, and even if they're not Christians, many times seeking advice from those parents that know, know, know us well could be helpful. But there are a multitude of counselors that we should look to. Certainly, I believe, when, when it comes to major decisions in a Christian's life, they ought to seek the, their pastor or their elders and seek counsel and guidance from them. Um, and, and a godly pastor and a godly elder is not going to be demanding and say, you do this or do that. They'll simply point out the obvious, that they, there's freedom within the circle of God's will. They'll s share with you principles from Scripture. And they're going to let you make your own decision, but they're going to guide you the best they can into the principles and the Scriptures of life. Uh, but there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Now, I say this, it's very important that we, that we heed the counsel of wise individuals. Uh, the, Wise man says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. So if we turn a, 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 a deaf ear to our parents, to our pastors, to elders, to wise counselors, and simply go out helter-skelter and make decisions on our own without asking anybody for advice, that's not a wise thing to do. So the first two principles that my father-in-law often shared was there is freedom within the boundaries of God's Word. We follow the principles and teachings of Scripture. There's wisdom, secondly, in a multitude of counselors. One principle, which is the third that he often shared with me, which is very important, he would tell me when I had decisions to make, particularly when it was uh, related to do I become an evangelist or a pastor, do I go to this church or that church, or do I do this or that, he would often say, what does God call you to do? I recall early on that I had an opportunity to, to take a position at the university where I studied for the ministry. They offered me a very nice position and I, and I went to my father-in-law and I said, what do you think about this offer that I've been given? And his question, and this is the third principle, he said, he said, Bob, where can you glorify God the most? What has God called you to do? If he's called you to preach, can you glorify him in that position at that university or can you glorify him more? in getting out into the field and doing what God's called you to do. And that's been a, a decision that I've always, uh, or a principle that I've always followed, is that we need to ask ourselves, it, when any decision comes up, it, it, whatever it may be, we ask ourselves, can I glorify God doing that, being there, 
Uh, where can I most glorify the Lord? What gives me the most opportunity to glorify Him? So those are, those are principles that are very important. The fourth principle he often said is when you're looking for God's will in your life, um, he asked, has God opened doors? Has He closed doors? Is it giving you peace about something? Uh, that's important. If you're praying for, for the will of God, if you're praying for a mate or for a job, or you're praying for a position, look for God to answer your prayers. He will close doors. He will open doors. There will be times that you think this is the will of God, and maybe at the last minute he'll show you it's not God's will. Uh, there may be a, a situation where you are absolutely convinced that this is where you should be or where you should go, then out of, out of nowhere the door closes or another door opens, that, that may happen, but, but wait on the Lord and see what doors you know, He opens or what doors He closes. That principle I shared a few moments ago from David, uh, delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart, is another principle. That would be, I suppose, the, the fifth principle, and that is, you know, God delights to give us the desires of our heart. When you're making a decision, uh, a big decision in your life, ask yourself, what, what do you really want to do? What do you really want to do? And what gives you joy? What, what seems to turn your heart and really stir your soul? Uh, what are you passionate about? You know, so uh, the Lord doesn't call us into drudgery. Uh, His will is going to be exciting. His will is going to be, be something that we're going to want to do. And there will be a, a, a desire to want to leap into it with all of our heart, with all of our, our energy, with all of our strength and our, our mind. So those are principles that, that are very important. Um, one of the things that I've often said to people is just when it comes to seeking God's will, of, of another principle is use sanctified common sense. In other words, sometimes it's just it's just so obvious that when you're making a decision that this this it's just obvious that 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 isn't a good fit for you. You don't feel right about it, or you just don't have peace about it. Common sense. Uh, don't neglect the common sense that God gives us. Uh, I would not make any decision, uh, another principle, I would not make any decision until I had peace about it. Uh, I wouldn't go into something with uncertainty. I would, I would pray that God would give me peace, as, as the scripture says. I would, I would wait until I hear the, the voice of God saying, uh, this is the way, walk you in it. I would wait for that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to me, giving me peace, that this is what He wants me to do. So don't make a decision until you have peace. We also know that we all have spiritual gifts. And when you think about your spiritual gifts, you, you say where, what, if your gift is teaching, or if you're in the office of a preacher, or a teacher, if, you're, if your gift is serving, uh, ask where can I use my gift to the greatest amount to glorify God. Uh, know your spiritual gift, and then know where you can use it. Uh, God will call us to a position where we are fitted by our gifts uh, to serve Him properly. And then I, another thing, bathe your decision-making in prayer. Uh, pray for wisdom from God. Remember what I, what I said in the scriptures? Uh, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He'll you know, lead your, your paths and bring it to pass. So pray for wisdom from God when you have a decision to make. Make sure you're seeking the Lord in, in wisdom and seeking it from other counselors. Uh, I would say this is a practical situation. My father-in-law always taught me, he said, Bob, never make a decision based on, con on convenience or comfort. Uh, sometimes the decisions that we might make in life might take us in different directions. And the will of God does not always lead to prosperity, does not always lead to uh, comfort. Uh, you, you think of uh, John G. Payton. Uh, he knew that when he was called to the... Uh, uh, the New Hebrides, he and his wife, he knew that more than likely that he and his wife would die there. Many of the missionaries in those days, as they went out in that, that burst of missionary movement, they went out knowing that many of them would never come back. And as a matter of fact, not long after landing on the islands of the New Hebrides, uh, John Payton lost his wife, and a few weeks later lost his little baby as well. Uh, same was true of William Carey, went to India, didn't go there because it was convenient or comfortable, went there to serve the Lord. His wife lost her mind there, she suffered terribly. Um, many people who went to these mission fields, uh, many of them were martyred. Uh, it was just unbelievable the great sacrifices they paid. Hudson Taylor went to Africa and died in Africa. They brought his, his body back to be buried at, uh, I believe it was at Westminster. Uh, Abbey, but his heart was buried in Africa. The will of God is not always convenient. The will of God is not always easy. 
it doesn't always lead to prosperity, but you will have a peace about it, whatever decision it may be. But, but don't make decisions based merely on conviction or convenience. Um, some one of the great mistakes pastors make, I think, at times is is they always look for the biggest church or the most lucrative uh, uh, contract or something. Or uh, and I think that's basic, basing things on flesh. When I came to Berean Baptist Church, I don't know if anybody knew it at the time, but I actually took a cut in pay in coming here. And I came to a church that at the time I was warned by a number of people that it, it was a very difficult church. As someone had said to me. But nevertheless, I felt peace that this was the will of God. I knew I was coming to a situation that was going to be difficult. I was taking cut and pay, but I felt that was what God would want me to do. I would say this as a principle. My father-in-law always taught me, he said, Bob, don't be afraid to launch out into the deep. When you have a decision to make, sometimes there are. it's easy to be comfortable and to, and to be in a, in a comfortable situation. But sometimes he wants us to, to launch out and to, to, to go out into the deep and, and into the uncertainty and sometimes that's where he would have us to do. Not always, but sometimes. Um, bathe your decisions in prayer as you seek wisdom, but bathe, bathe them in prayer. Keep all these things before the Lord and, and seek His face. And then I think I would say last of all is don't second guess yourself. When you make a decision, you follow the principles I've just mentioned, uh, you've done all these different things, you, you want to make sure that once you've made a decision, then that has become the will of God. And when you make a decision, if somebody else says, well, that's, that was a wrong decision, don't worry what someone else says. You've got to live with the consequences of whatever, whatever decisions you make. Um, be at peace about it. Pray about it. Seek God's wisdom. And once you've gone through these principles that I've mentioned, and you've worked your way through these things, and once you make a decision, then be at peace about it. Now, again, there are consequences to all of our decisions. Um, we don't know. You know for, for, for example, uh, a young lady may choose a young man to be her husband. She has no idea, based on, on just what she sees, I mean, that how faithful he'll be, uh, how kind he'll be, uh, what kind of uh, person he'll be to live with. Uh, when you're courting somebody or you, when you're, you're seeing somebody, once you get married, you, you base it on their testimony and, and you've spent time together and so forth. But, but, but boy, there's, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of uncertain things that happen. And sometimes what we think are go going to be a, a great situation doesn't turn out so well. And once you make your decision and you move ahead with it, then you have to live with the consequences of that decision. Uh, sometimes the decisions we make, we've, we've gone through all these principles I've mentioned. We've, we've tried to make a decision within the boundaries of God's will. We've, we've sought many different counselors. We've sought where we could honor God the most. We've asked, are there any open doors are there, uh, or closed doors? What's the desires of our heart? Have we prayed for, for, for wisdom? Have we bathed in prayer? We've used common sense. We've not based our decisions on our feelings. Uh, we've tried to have peace about it. Uh, we've done all these different things that I've mentioned, and that even then, after we've made a decision, sometimes it doesn't come out the way we thought. Uh, that doesn't mean you've made a wrong decision. Uh, sometimes things are that way, and, and God calls us sometimes to tough situations. He calls us to make decisions, and maybe it doesn't work out to the best, and uh, maybe you make a, a career choice. You, you, take a job with a company and you thought it was going to be great and it just didn't pan out. You think you, you th think maybe you made a wrong decision. Not necessarily. It may be in the providence of God. He's had something to teach you through the process of what you've gone through. I recall when I was was at a church in, in, in early in my ministry, uh, I came to a point where I felt that the church was moving in a direction that I wasn't comfortable with and it was going against what I believe were the convictions of my heart on a number of matters. And so I, I had peace. I prayed about it and waited on the Lord. I had peace that I needed to resign from that particular church and trust God for another open door. I had confidence that He was going to open the door immediately for me. And what I didn't realize is that's not what God had in mind. Uh, I resigned. I didn't make any trouble. I didn't cause any disturbance. I just felt it wasn't the Lord's will for me to remain there any longer, and I felt it was time to move on. And then I expected any moment that I'd be getting a letter in the mail and I'd be moving on, and it didn't happen. And for a year and a half, I, I waited, Mary and I waited and waited to see what God would do. 
for me in that particular circumstance, I had people that came and said to me that there were rumors that, well, uh, Pastor Dickey made a wrong decision and he's in the flesh. And, um, and it had to do over, over my convictions on the doctrines of grace. And when that was being said, I thought, you know what? Uh, people were saying he'll soon be out of the ministry, he'll be out selling shoes or doing this or selling insurance. Not that that would be wrong. Uh, but I made, it, I made a decision at that time because of what was being said about me. And I thought, Lord, you've called me to preach. And I, I've made this decision based on the principles, the teachings, and the convictions I have on your word. And I knew that what I did was right. And I said, Lord, I am going to trust you. I believe you called me to the ministry, and I said, I'm not going to go out and get a job. I am not going to take any uh, kind of uh, uh, welfare of any kind or any kind of unemployment. I said, Lord, I'm your servant, and I'm going to trust you to meet the needs in my life. And for a year and a half, almost two years, Mary and I lived day by day by faith. Uh, we had Bobby was just a little boy at the time, he just a newborn. Uh, we had a car payment. We lived in an apartment. I uh, didn't have a lot of bills or a lot of responsibilities, but we had mouths to feed and, and obligations to meet. And during that two years, God met every need, and we never n made a payment late on our apartment or our car. Uh, we were able to see our way through. God opened up doors for me to preach in, in a variety of places in different states. I had weeks of meetings that came open. I spoke at camps and at uh, interim as interim pastor from time to time at churches. Um, I was asked to speak at various little revival services around churches around the country, uh, do pulpit supply, and it's amazing how God uh, blessed us during those times. And during those times, I gave myself continually to the study of the Word and prayer, and I look back, and that was a season when I learned so well to trust God. And I remember certain verses that came to me, Open thy mouth wide, and I'll fill it, God taught me. And, and he taught me that he can provide a table for me in the wilderness. So when you make a decision, I've given you a number of principles to think on. When you finally make a decision concerning a, a mate or a career or some major decision in your life, once you make that decision, don't worry what anyone else thinks. Just go with it. Um, leave it in the hands of God. And if you go down the road and it doesn't turn out the way you thought it would and you think, well, maybe I... I could have done something d differently. Don't worry about it. Just regroup and pray, and God will direct your steps. Uh, sometimes He will He'll teach us a lot of things through the experiences of life. When Abraham uh, left the land of Haran and went out to a land that God was going to show him, he had no idea where he was going. He didn't know where he was going. And there were many trials and struggles along the way. When God revealed himself to Joseph and made it clear to him that he had a, a brilliant and wonderful future for Joseph, he, Joseph had no idea that it would lead through prison and through suffering and, and through all the different experiences that he experienced. So it was when Jesus called his disciples and they must have felt so honored to be called by Messiah to walk with him. Little did they know that every one of them except John would, would be martyred for the faith. So the will of God doesn't always lead to places of comfort or places of prosperity. Things don't always go the way we think they ought to go, but God's will is always best. And it's a great teacher for us. And in the rough places of life, in the sorrows of life, in the burdens of life, God can teach us many things. Well, I hope these principles are helpful. My father-in-law, he's now gone to be with the Lord. Uh, he taught me these things uh, over the years, and they've been uh, a real help to me. So when someone says to me, says, Pastor, uh, how do you find the will of God? I just have these, these principles in my mind, and I s simply start bringing them back to memory, and I remember what my father-in-law said, and I said, well, okay, number one, make sure that you're, you're making a decision within the framework of God's Word. Make sure that you uh, counsel with, with many different counselors. Um, there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Ask yourself, where can I glorify God the most? Uh, the glory of God is the most important thing that we can do in life. I ask, has God opened doors or closed doors? What's the desire of your heart? Because He delights to give us the desires of our heart. I tell people, don't make any decisions purely or solely based upon feelings, because feelings can be, can be wrong. Make sure you use sanctified common sense. Uh, make sure that you, you use the, the brains that God's given you to use. Don't make a decision till you have inner peace. The Lord will give you peace. 
you'll, you'll hear that still small voice saying, this is the way, walk you in it. Make sure that whatever decision you make, that you're able to use your spiritual gift to the maximum for the glory of God. If I have the gift of prophecy or exhortation or serving or, 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 or ministry, I don't use that gift uh, properly if I'm not in a place where I can exercise it. I pray, and again, I pray for wisdom. I ask God to give me wisdom and so forth. I don't make a decision based on comfort and convenience. I'm not afraid to launch out into the deep. I'll seek counsel from, from my uh, wife. I'll, I'll ask her for her input, but she knows that ultimately the decision will rest upon me. I'll bathe my decisions in prayer and seek her, her grace with me as we, we pray together. And then we, we launch out and do whatever God calls us to do. And in the end, whatever decision I make, I don't second guess myself. Well, these are the principles that I've learned that have been helpful to me in trying to discern God's will for my life and my future. Um, God will guide us if we're humble and if we walk in His steps. So in the days to come, I pray, my dear Brain family, uh, I'm going to give you a list in my blog here. After you read the, uh, hear this video, I'll have a list of books that I have found to be very, very helpful in helping me to discover and learning how to discern the will of God. My prayer is that you'll know God's will, and by knowing God's will, you'll, you'll find great joy wherever you are as an individual, as a family, that you'll find great joy in the Lord. One final thing comes to my mind just is before we close, um, and this is not necessarily something my father-in-law taught me, but it's something that I feel is very important. When people come to me and they say, well, I've, I've got to leave the area, Pastor. I've got to go off and look for a job, and I know the Flint area is not easy when it comes to work. I would say this as, a, as your pastor to all of you. Uh, I would not take a job anywhere if, you, if there is not a church in that area where you can truly take your family to worship and to grow in grace. And I don't mean just any church. Uh, there are people going to churches all over the country today. I've seen people leave Berean and go to churches, and, I, and they're not even churches. They're, they're, it's almost shameful what goes on in some of these places. Uh, the worship of God is important, and I don't believe God is going to lead you to a, to, a, to a place where you can't worship and guide your children uh, to grow and to learn in the things of God. Make sure that's, that's a part of any decision that you make. May the Lord bless you. May he smile upon you and give you grace.